there's this problem with these brown tree snakes that are an invasive in Guam. And these snakes got to Guam during at the end of World War II when General MacArthur was consolidating the U.S. forces in Manus. There was a big battles in Manus with the Japanese after World War II, during World War II. And then afterwards, they um, consolidated a lot of the uh, military equipment in Manus, and then they shipped it from Manus to Guam. And in shipping the materials from Manus to Guam, they accidentally brought these tree snakes as an invasive from Manus to the United States to Guam. And over the last 70 years or 60 years, these snakes have spread throughout Guam and have created lots of problems on Guam. They've eaten all the bird species that were native there. They've eaten the lizards. They create power outages. They do a lot of damage on Guam. So we started a research project to look at the snakes in their native range in Manus and other parts of New Guinea. And the snakes are native to Australia as well, to Queensland. But they don't cause the problems that they cause in Guam in their native range. So we started the study and, and came to Manus in uh, 2010 to start studying the snakes. And incidental to studying the snakes there, that's when we discovered this gecko. And this gecko, we spent 10 days in the, in the bush on Manus and only found two geckos. And they were within about 100 feet of each other, 100 meters of each other, 300 feet of each other, whatever. They were in a small area in, the, in a pretty remote part of Manus. And so we think they're... Um, pretty restricted in range, maybe just some primary forest, and surprisingly, they've never been seen before. Like, when I saw it, I saw how striking it was, and it's not often I see a lizard that I just have no idea what it is, and this thing just sitting on, it was on a wall of a village hut, and I was like, you know, it just was just shocking, because I was like, I don't know what that lizard is, and the, the, the lizard species in Manus aren't that diverse, so it surprised me, and then struck me like a bumblebee. It so did you I, name it, did you? We just described it. The name just came out this month, Nactus Kunan. And we use Kunan as uh, the Nali language. That's the language of the village we were in. That's their word for bumblebee. All right. It was so found we in Solon Ilu village in Manus. So you think there's yeah, a, a, right. a very small population, but you don't really know much more. But describe no, this bumblebee gecko. It, it doesn't have these foot pads like a lot of the geckos. But it's you, in Australia, you have a lot of geckos that don't have foot pads as well. They call them slender toes, where they they have like a toe like other lizards. One of the striking things about this, not just the color, but it's got a lot of bumps on it, tubercles. When you touch it, it's very um, bumpy, more extremely bumpy than other members of that same group of geckos, of these slender toed geckos. And so that was a bit striking. It, it's not a very big gecko, but like I said, the, the pictures don't do it justice, how bright the yellow was when we first saw it there. It was really striking. I tried to take photos of it later, and it just never never could get the color to come back the way it was initially. And it's got this, like, orangey eye that, that was pretty um, surprising as well. And like I said, we've only seen the two, the two, the one adult female and then the juvenile female. And, and it was a bit of field work we did there. And so we were, um, uh, we did find that there's an invasive gecko also on that island on Manus. And, and that's a slender-toed gecko from the other parts of the Pacific. And so we think that that may be acting as an invasive in Manus, and that might have shown up when they were moving the military equipment to Manus before they moved it to Guam. And so that might be displacing this bumblebee gecko at the lower elevations. Now, you only saw two of these bumblebee geckos, but I wonder, did you talk to the community in Sohon Ilu village on Manus Island to know whether there are more? Have they cited them themselves? They have, like a lot, a lot of places, they have uh, local names for different types of things. Like these geckos are not very exciting to them, so they don't discriminate between some of the different kinds of geckos that are small, but we did discover two other geckos we haven't described yet, and one of them is a very big one that kind of has wings, flaps on it, and I saw it kind of fly between these two trees, and that one they did have a name for because it was distinctive enough and they were familiar with it that they had a, their own local name for that gecko, but this one I asked them about, and they don't recognize it as different from some of the other geckos that are small or smaller lizards even uh, that are in their community. You know, I was with the villagers when we found it and, you know, trying to show them the differences and trying to get them excited about, you know, trying to find more. Well, as a researcher, what did you, you do now? It must be awfully frustrating because if there's only two, you can't actually take one for research. So you've just had to walk away, turn your back on it and hope that they keep breeding. You can get more info on it well, later. We think there's more for sure. Like, it's, there's some big chunks of forest there still on Manus. The road system and, and access is pretty poor in Manus. 
That's why most of the work in Manus has been on the coastal areas. I, I believe that there's still populations of them on the island for sure, but maybe not giant populations. And I think it would be great to go back and do a more in- intensive survey kind of in the forest and focusing on this gecko and kind of a study just on the gecko, not moving away from the snake. Like I said, this was secondary to our primary goal when we were in Manus last time, which was the snake. And this was just accidental discovery we made. And one thing that's interesting about it is we looked at the genetics of this gecko. And this gecko is actually more closely related to some species from Queensland than it is to species from New Guinea. And so it's really, you have a really rare gecko in Queensland that is somewhat banded like this, not as striking as this one, but it's it's kind of yellow and black modeled. And it's actually more closely related to this gecko than... Is there a suggestion then that it uh, was carried or transported in some way from Queensland to Manus? No, no. We just think these are very old and and that they've been prior to even origination of New Guinea. So New Guinea is relatively a recent island, but that Manus and this group of geckos is, is very old and that the islands were in different places then when they were diverging. And like I said, New Guinea wasn't even in the picture at that point. It's very interesting, and that genetics kind of showed a, a, a bit of a different pattern than we would have expected looking at where land is today. We're confident with that result that this guy is more closely related to some Australian geckos than it is to uh, other New Guinea species.